You were never the same after the blow. You always told me there is no shame in walking away. Oh my God! Bruh. What? Sorry. Hmm. I think I'm noticing a pattern. So after watching Secret Invasion, I knew that the MCU was completely and utterly dead, and not just because they took what should be a huge storyline that should run over into several projects and made it into a six episode miniseries that changes nothing about the overarching narrative. Well, to be fair, that's, that's part of it. But also because they completely decimated one of the best and only well-regarded heroes that the MCU had left. Nick Fury. Nick Fury during this entire show is just a broken old man who does literally fuck all except suddenly complain about his race, since apparently it's a big deal now, expose his fetish for scrolls, you naughty boy, and gets told on every occasion possible that he's not the same as he was before the blip, and that, well. The fact that you don't know tells me all I need to know about this new rather old Nick Fury. <sighs> Now, the reason I bring this up is because we've seen very, very similar things happen to other heroic male characters that we came to love so much in their first few movies, only to see them crumble and turn into the butt of literally every joke when the corporations adjusted to modern times. And Nick Fury is the perfect example. If you look at the man he was before Phase 4, he was a commanding, no bullshit leader who brought together Earth's Mightiest Heroes, survived that car chase, and got pissed off when he got snapped away because he knew that he couldn't do anything about the given circumstance. The Nick Fury we knew didn't have time to think about dying or potentially not making it through his current mission. He was always determined to come out on the other side victorious, whether that be himself or any of the Avengers, and he was a clear badass through and through. Only, that's how it used to be. Because the cracks started to show in Captain Marvel, where the once mysterious backstory behind losing his eye to someone that he trusted was finally revealed. Oh my no God! Then there was that post credit scene from Far From Home, where it was shown that he's just chilling in space for some reason, which felt pretty contrary to what we'd expect from him, especially during such a significant point in time for the MCU. And then came Secret Invasion, where it was revealed why this was the case. And you know... With that being said, Nick Fury isn't the only character under Disney that's had a similar treatment. Just take a look at Luke Skywalker. Widely regarded as one of the greatest cinematic characters of all time, who went from the greatest Jedi to ever live, to a depressed, isolated old man who's lost all hope and drinks green milk from the teats of an alien creature. <laughs> There's also Indiana Jones, who went from a heroic, charismatic, and brave adventurer to now a depressed and broken down 80 year old man who's turned into a laughingstock by a stronger, more capable woman who's smarter than he ever was, and who's so self centered that she doesn't acknowledge the hard times that Indy goes through because all she cares about is a big fortune and thinks that it's perfectly fine to take advantage of an old man who genuinely cares for her in order to do so. <sighs> But why does this keep happening? Why do we keep seeing our favourite male characters turn into pathetic losers who are a complete shell of the man that they used to be? Why do studios think that this will be something that fans of the franchises want to witness? And why can't Harrison Ford catch a fucking break? I mean, poor guy. Well, there's a few commonalities between all of these characters which seem to always come alongside the ageing male lead, because it's not enough to keep their character at the forefront, because well, if we're going to make this old man an incapable cuckold who complains 24-7, there needs to be someone who's more capable, intelligent, and better than he is in every aspect. Who may this be, you might ask? Well, I'll give you a hint. Have you guessed correctly yet? No? Okay, here's some more. Okay, okay, I think that's enough. The simple answer is, well, at least for Disney, there always needs to be a female replacement. Every single time, they take the male character that you know and love, make them incapable of doing literally anything even remotely interesting, and pave the way for a female character to take the lead. The only issue is that the female character usually never goes through nearly as many trials and tribulations if any, compared to our male hero, and seems to be incredibly capable of doing literally anything the plot needs her to do, for no logical reason. Why does the replacement always have to be female? I don't know. But with it being such a common occurrence, I get the feeling that a corporation like Disney is full of middle-aged women who drink a little too much wine on the weekends, and because they got rejected by this one guy in high school, they all complain about how they wish they could be someone else, instead of actually putting in the work to improve. Because it might be hard to believe, but projecting your own shortcomings and insecurities into the media that you're creating, by pushing forward a character that has none of those flaws, and in fact, so much so, that she literally has zero challenges to overcome, and never makes any mistakes because of how perfect she is. Well, 
it doesn't fix how you see yourself in real life. And it also doesn't make your character very interesting or someone that an audience can get invested into. And when the characters are terrible, well, the project itself is inevitably going to be the same. <laughs> Now, of course, they could actually let their minds rest for a few minutes and begin to come up with something, you know, original. But no, instead, we're going to take something that you love, beat them to the ground, bring in a female version who's better in every aspect, and shove it in your face how amazing they are. And if you question us, you're just sexist and, and hate strong women. In an ideal world, Disney would simply look at characters like Ethan Hunt or Maverick, who are still kicking ass even in their 50s and 60s, look at the box office numbers, and consider the fact that, and let me remind you, their predominantly male audience actually like seeing their favourite characters still be capable of great feats, even if they're past their prime, and Disney would go on to replicate the same thing with the characters at their disposal. Or, even better, they could just, I don't know, leave them the fuck alone. What's scary is that, considering how Disney love to treat their male characters, it's only a matter of time before you see other big names return, because as we all know, they somehow think that fun cameos will make you forget about how shit the project really is, and especially when you consider the attitudes of a lot of actors in real life, I'd imagine that they'd be perfectly happy to come back as a dumbed down version of the character, despite what they may say. It, it would have to be... Perfect. Because see, saying you're ready to move on from a role only works when you're a well-established actor outside of that universe, because on the contrary, you'll come to realise that you're nothing without the character you portray, and I don't think I'm wrong in saying that Disney will always be prepared to deliver a very fat paycheck whenever necessary. Who knows how long this will go on for, but considering that they only have so many legacy characters left to destroy, and they're losing money at the speed of lightning, it can't be much longer. And I guess it's all dependent on the actors themselves. And if they're willing to destroy their legacy for a quick buck. Or if they actually love their character, and would be unwilling to return unless the circumstance was perfect, and actually treat the character with respect. Which brings me on to another question. Why do actors not push back? Why are they so willing to return to a character when it's pretty clear how unappealing an 80 year old Indiana Jones will be for audiences, or when your most iconic role is played for nothing but laughs and humiliates anything that came before? I imagine one of the biggest factors is ego, not of the actors, but of the writers. We've all seen what can happen when the actors who've been playing the same character for years on end recognise that a script is just not doing the story justice, and when they try to push back, the people working on it dismiss any critiques because their big fat Nikocado avocado sized ego tells them that the actors don't know what they're talking about, and that, in reality, we're doing a great job. They must somehow convince the actors that they know what they're doing, and that the actor just doesn't understand the approach that's being taken. Because sure, in some cases that may be true, but in more occasions than not, the opposite has been the case. And unless the creative team as a whole begin to listen to the feedback of others, this shit is going to continue for a long time. The treatment of male characters at Disney is shit. The treatment of female characters, considering how uninteresting or unlikable they are, is also shit. The treatment of everything is shit. Well, I guess Disney will just have to see the consequences for themselves, which believe me, they are, and it's not long until they finally have to admit that they fucked up, as you can only be saved by live action remakes or superhero movies for so much time before the cracks are too great to ignore, and you can no longer paint over them with your excuses, like they don't exist. Because I and many others noticed them a long time ago, and now people really are starting to see you for what you really are, and it's not a pretty sight, I'll tell you that. Anyway, thank you for watching the video, like, subscribe, share the video, all that jazz, won't force you though, of course, and I will see you in the next one very, very soon. Bye!